Everything starts with learning the basic principles. An animation, not an exception. Before animating complex characters, you need to understand fundamentals on simple objects. It's more safe and easy at the beginning. I've got my first job in animation, literally knowing how to animate bouncing ball only. And in this video, I will show you how to create easiest animations and how the basic principles work equally on simple objects and full characters. Let's start with bouncing ball. We create three poses, two lower and one upper. This gives us a uniform up and down movement, but a bouncing ball moves differently. Here we adjust the spacing. Just make a curve in graph editor like this, so that the ball sharply rises, slow down and falls with acceleration. Now it's look more realistic, but it's still missing something. This is where the next animation principles comes in handy, squash and stretch. The name speaks for itself. For a jump, we need anticipation and impulse. So we make a pause for a few frames to prepare, squash the ball, imagine a character crouching before the jump, then stretch before moving upward. At the highest point we return the original form and repeat the process but with downward movement. At the contact pose it's stretched, the next frame is squashed, then back to the original form. It's look good, but let's enhance the landing effect. Return the ball for its default form for a few frames later. And add two additional squash and stretch poses, but with less amplitude. Now the movement ends more smoothly and we better feel the weight of the ball. Great! Let's do the same but with full character. Use pelvis controller to create a base for the jump using bulk animation as a reference. Anticipation, same spacing and overshoot at the end. Now let's animate the chest controller to show squash and stretch, again relying on a ball. Hip goes first, but chest stays on place stretching the body, but then quickly goes up outrunning the hip. At the upper point the body takes its base form and then hip goes down leading the chest which follows with a slight delay. Let's see one more time. We have these two boxes with same animations. Offset chest box animation on a timeline just for one frame. And we already have a different movement. Hip goes first, pushing the chest. But let's make anticipation pose quicker for the chest and longer for the hip. Now much better. In most of the animation the hip leads the chest, but right at the jump moment chest leads the hip. Hope you get it. Let's move on to the next principle, overlapping and follow through. The technique shows that the part of the character depends on each other. The secondary part follow the main movement, adding realism and physics. We have this simple left to right movement and let's animate the tail. Starting from the first controller. Go forward a few frames when the main part has reached its maximum speed and rotate the tail to the first frame position to create a delay or drag effect. Go to frame when the body just started moving backwards and rotate the tail again. Then just repeat it a few times to completely calm down the movement. Now just copy the animation of the tail to other controllers and shift them on the timeline a few frames later. Done! This is how easily you can create the overlapping effect when one movement follows another. And now we can add a tail animation to the ball, which will be a reference for the arms and legs. It's basically the same as with the pendulum tail. The ball is already going up, but the tail still stays down and goes up later. The ball is already falling down and the tail is still continues its upward movement. Similarly with the subsequent part of the tail, which gives us a softer and more wavy transitions between the upper and lower poses. Once again, all the same, the arms will completely follow the main movement with a slight delay. The body has already started to go down, but we can see that the arms have almost stayed in place and are only moving down after the body starts to move up. At the top, the body has already completed its upward movement and is slowly going down, while the arms continue to move upwards. And if you look closely at the wrist, you will also notice this overlap. The forearm is moving down, but the wrist is rotating to the top, which makes the arm stays the upper position for a bit longer. And don't forget about the shoulders. I've also added a delay effect here, which makes the arm animation more natural. 
For legs animation we use the same method like for the chest and hip. At the beginning legs follows the body, creating stronger stretched pose and then body follows the legs right before the landing. And as you can see the legs don't land at the same time. Next we can add more details animating cloth, fingers and adjusting facial expression. As I said, all the principles works equally for everything. Hope the video was helpful. Happy animating guys and see you soon.